So um, today we're going to go over some of the tree identification basics. Um, Kentucky is like we said, there are so many different species. We have over 120 different tree species in the state, which can, as you imagine, make it a little challenging to identify trees, but there are tools out there that can help us so you don't have to memorize everything. Um, and that's what we're gonna walk through today. Um, learning how to look at some of those main characteristics of, the, of a tree and how to use those characteristics using a tool called a dichotomous key to help you identify that species that you're standing in front of and you wanna know what it is. So really that, that process of identifying trees, it can be very logical and there's a sequence to it. And when you use a dichotomous key, and I'm not sure if anybody's used one of these before, um, we use it for all kinds of organisms. Um, it's a wonderful, there's all kinds of them out there as well too. And I'm gonna use, talk about this little guy right here, the tree finder, but it is a dichotomous leaf key. So it's looking at the leaves of the tree um, and, and asking you questions and you're gonna look at characteristics, answer those questions and move on to the next set of questions questions eventually taking you to that species. Um, but just a little bit about the little tree finder. These are great um, little tools. They're about $5 a piece. They are pocket size, which as you can see, um, one of our forestry students using that right there, you know, handheld pocket size. They have about 70, 75 different species in it, all in the eastern half of the United States. So it's very appropriate um, for us to use and they're inexpensive, you know, about $5 on Amazon. So when you use a dichotomous key, you're gonna, you're really gonna start looking at the characteristics of the tree because that key is gonna ask you about some of those characteristics. And with a leaf key, we're gonna look at obviously the leaves of a tree, but there are also winter tree finders. So we can actually, in the winter, you can identify trees even without their leaves. I wouldn't suggest starting there. It's a little harder. Um, start with leaves. That's the best place to start. But you can learn to look at different characteristics of the twigs and the buds to help you identify trees in the winter. Flowers can also be helpful. But again, those are seasonal. So, you know, we only have flowers for a short period of time. And the fruit can also be um, can be a useful tool, especially if you're in question about what it, you know, like especially oaks sometimes, because they can be a little tricky to key out. Being able to see the acorn, that'll give you another characteristic to look at to help you go, yes, I know I have a white oak or something. So, and then lastly, bark. And a lot of people love to use bark and bark can be a really handy um, characteristic to look at, especially on trees that have very distinctive bark, like this one that we just popped up here. This is an American sycamore. I always called it, we always learned it as the camouflage tree because the bark looks like camouflage down at the bottom of the base of the tree. It's brown. And as you move up that branch, it kind of, that brown peels away, exposing that white underneath. But as it moves up, it's mottled and it kind of looks like camouflage. These are the kinds of trees that are easy to see out in the woods because you can see that bark on it. But a lot of our trees don't have super distinct bark um, and it changes from when they're small, their bark may be tight and smooth. And as that tree grows, it may get broken up and get little furrows and fissures and ridges on it. So bark can be a good characteristic for certain species. So just keep that in mind. But we are gonna start with leaves because that's the best place to start. Okay, just a quick warning though, when we're looking at leaves, you wanna make sure that you look at more than one leaf on a tree. Um, you Because all leaves, even of the same species on a tree, may not look exactly the same. And here's a great example, black oak, which is a tree, one of our oak species that does kind of highly variable leaves. But you can see we've got a black oak here, very broad, flat leaf. And now we've got another black oak here that's got much deeper indentations in it. And we call these, those indentations, the sinuses. And then this is a black oak and this almost looks like an evergreen leaf. It's shiny and it's thick. So you wanna make sure you look at multiple leaves. Um, this is true for our deciduous trees, like what we're talking about here. We also call those broadleaf. And it's true for our conifers or our needle type trees as well. Okay, so when we're using a dichotomous key for leaves, the first thing we're going to determine when we walk up to our tree, does our tree have needles? 
do the leaves look like this? Are they needle-like or and even cedar-like? So cedars, um, which have more of a, a compressed um, scale-like leaf would be a needle-type leaf, or are they broadleaf? Um, and broadleaf, that means think of it just like a nice broad palm, the flat um, surface. Um, so most of our trees in Kentucky are broadleaf. Um, we have by far m way more species. We're considered an oak hickory forest. So we have tons of different broadleaf types trees. They're deciduous, thus the leaves are changing colors right now. They're gonna fall um, in later fall and then they will grow new leaves in the spring. We do have a, a handful. We have about, I think it's seven or eight different species of conifers that are native to the state. And they will retain their needles throughout the year. And in fact, they usually retain needles two or three years and they slowly drop off. So they never lose all of their needles at once. So it never looks like they've dropped all their needles. But so identifying conifers in the state out in the woods in a natural setting is a little bit easier than some of our um, broadleaf or deciduous trees. Okay, so let's start with, let's get our, our needle-like leaves or our conifers out of the way since we have so, there's so, there's not nearly as many of them. So our needle-like leaves can be scale-like, this kind of overlapping, which we would think of as our cedar trees. The needles can be arranged singly, so it's just one little needle stuck to the twig, or our needles can be in bundles like we see here. And counting the number of needles in a bundle is one of the identification, one of those characteristics you look at to tell different pine trees from each other. So let's look at a capsule couple pictures. So we've got Eastern red cedar, that's our top one right here. And it has those compressed flat scale like needles on the older growth. Now that new growth has that prickly, like if you were to rub your hand across that, that's gonna be kind of um, feel like a little sticker. And then we also have northern white cedar, which we don't have a ton of that in the state. We do plant it a lot, um, but it has a very uh, scale-like type needle. But those sprays or those, those branches are very flat and it's very smooth and very soft. So those are our two scale-like needles, that trees that we have. And then we've got eastern hemlock, um, which some of you all may have been hearing about it with the hemlock woolly adelgid. It's being impacted by um, an insect. Um, negatively impacted, but so we have our eastern hemlock right here, and it has a single needle. All those needles are just in singles attached to that twig, and then we have our bald cypress, which is a single needle attached to the twig. Now, I do want to point out on bald cypress, it is a deciduous conifer, so it will drop all of its needles in the fall. In fact, they're starting to change color right now, just like our deciduous trees, but then it'll grow back new needles in the spring. Now we get into our pines. This is where we count the number of needles to help us to determine what we've got. So we've got eastern white pine. This one we plant all around our neighborhoods. We like it as a, like as a screen tree, you know, a little, like for a little privacy. And it's very soft. It kind of has a blue color. Sometimes we use it for a Christmas tree. Um, but eastern white pine has needles in groups of fives. So you want to make sure, and when I say groups of five, let me, I'll pull up my little laser pointer. So we can see this little cup down here, a little wooden cup, and it holds all of those needles together. And if you were to count all of those needles in that one cup, there'd be five needles. And that's why it's important to look at a couple of sets of those just in case one's fallen off. And then another pine that we have in the state is pitch pine. And its needles, this is a forested pine. This is not one we plant a whole lot um, in our, like in a, in a subdivision or something, but this is one we'll find out in the forest. And it has needles in groups of threes, and they're usually about three inches long. Um, and it is can be easily confused with shortleaf pine. The bark looks very similar on both of these, but the difference is shortleaf pine will have needles in twos and threes. So there, that's another reason to look at multiple sets of needles. So you can verify, yep, all of these are in groups of threes. So I have a pitch pine, or some of them are in twos and some are in threes. So I have a shortleaf pine. And then last, we have Virginia pine. We also call this pine scrub pine a lot of times. It's one you'll see growing along road cuts, on the top of ridges. It's really able to grow in some of the less hospitable type environments, drier, rockier, not great soil. Its needles are always in twos, um, and the, but its needles are going to be short compared to shortleaf pine or pitch pine. Their needles are usually maybe two maybe three inches long at the most, 
but their needles are also on short leaf pine as you can see they're in groups of two right here at that little cup they're usually a lot of times kind of like twisted around too so they'll be in twos and slightly twisted so i'll turn off my laser pointer so those are our conifers that we find here in the state. So there you go. Of our 120 <laughs> species, we've got eight of them pretty easy to do. So let's talk about all the rest, our broadleaf or our deciduous trees. Now we have some different characteristics to look at when we're looking at broadleaves. We're going to look at leaf arrangement. And leaf arrangement is simply um, looking at how these leaves are arranged on the twig. Are they across from each other or they alternate from each other and we'll go over more of that. We're going to look at leaf form and leaf form refers to is it a simple leaf like you have here just one blade or is it a compound leaf. What we see right here this grid that I'm circling is one whole leaf and this is off our Kentucky coffee tree. We're going to look at the leaf margin and you can and that's the edge of the leaf. Is it smooth like we see here or is our leaf margin serrated or have teeth on it? And then we're also going to talk about the tips of the leaves. This can be important, especially for species like our oaks. Our red, which this is a red oak right here. Red oaks will have bristle tips. They'll have like a little hair-like tip at the end of each one of their lobes. Whereas if this was a white oak, one of the white oaks, it would just be a rounded lobe. There wouldn't be a bristle tip. And then we'll also talk about what the base of that leaf looks like. Like this one on our, on this tree right here has a lovely heart-shaped or chordate-shaped base that can be a good characteristic to help um, identify um, that tree. And these are all characteristics that we're going to use and that the, our tree key is going to ask us about. Okay. So also another thing that we're going to look at, and this is great time of year because we do have buds and the early spring buds haven't set yet. So they're not, it's a little trickier, but by the time you hit June, you're going to see those buds um, for next year's growth. But the buds are just the location of the new stems, fruits, and leaves. And knowing and looking at the buds can be really helpful in determining leaf arrangement, which this we're determining how our leaves are arranged, in this case, opposite from one another. Um, and tell us about leaf form. Is it a simple leaf or a compound leaf? Um, but when we just look at our twig here, we've got, um, just to kind of identify a little bit of it, we've got a lateral bud. These are the ones that grow along the sides of the twig. And this is the terminal bud. And the terminal bud's the one that's responsible for shoot elongation, what's going to make that branch longer. And then you can even see underneath our lateral bud, this is where last year's or the last season's leaf was. That's called a leaf scar. That's where it was attached. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about leaf arrangement. Um, so we've got a couple of different kinds, and um, the first one that we'll jump in with is oppositely arranged, and you can see these leaves are oppositely arranged from each other on that twig, so they grow right across from each other. And if you can remember the mnemonic Mad Buck, you can remember the trees that have oppositely arranged leaves in Kentucky, and that stands for maple, ash, dogwood, and buckeye. All of those tree species have oppositely arranged leaves. So if you can remember Mad Buck, you've got it. Now, all of the rest of our leaves are mostly alternately arranged. So, um, but I will say that's not just for tree species with our oppositely arranged. We have multiple kinds of maples, multiple kinds of ashes, multiple dogwoods, and we have two different buckeyes that we find here. But so for the most part, most of our trees, though, have alternately arranged leaves. And you can see they're staggered along that leaf stem. So we've got one down here and then one up here. So that would be alternately arranged. And then lastly, we've got whorled. So these leaves grow whorled around that leaf stem and in groups of three. And northern catalpa is a great example of that. If any of you all have ever noticed a tree that has those big, long, thin fruits, this is the time of the year you'd see those fruits. It looks like a big, long, skinny cigar. That's a northern catalpa. And it has whorled leaves. Okay, so leaf arrangement, real important. Let's look at some actual photos. We've got alternately arranged leaves and you can see the buds as well. So if the leaf is alternately arranged, the buds are alternately arranged as well. So we've got a, a leaf here and a leaf there. And then we've got opposite. This one is a maple, maple, ash, dogwood, buckeye. So we've got oppositely arranged. You can see the buds are across from each other on that twig as are the leaves, so oppositely arranged. 
All right, so now we've, we've talked about, is it needles or is it broadleaf? We've looked at what our leaf arrangement is, alternate or opposite. Now we need to look at leaf form when we're looking at our leaf characteristic. And so leaf form is determined by what, how many blades there are basically on there. But what you'll do is you'll go up to your tree and you'll look to see you've got a leaf blade, like I'm circling right here. You've got a leaf blade, you'll go down that leaf stem or petiole as we call it and see if there is a bud. And if there's a bud down there and just the one blade, that is a simple leaf. Okay, so we've only got one blade because there's the bud down here, which is why those buds were important to be able to see those. Okay, but say so this is our tree. So we go, we look at the base of each one of, we think these are our leaves right here. And when I pull up my laser pointer, it might be a little easier. We look at the base of each one of these leaves and we're not seeing that we have any buds there. Oops, well, maybe we won't pull up our laser pointer. It's being silly. There we go. At the base of each one of these leaves, we're not finding a bud. So we move down this stem and we find that our bud is right there at the base of this. So we now have determined that we have a compound leaf. It's a palmately compound leaf and it's made up of five different leaflets. <clears throat> of our five different leaflets. So we have a com palmately compound leaf. Buckeyes have compound palmately compound leaf. Now we come over to this other one and we look at the base of each one of what we think are the leaves and we're not finding a bud. Instead, we find the bud all the way down here. So we've determined this whole thing is a leaf and that this is a pinnately compound leaf. And pinnately just means like a feather. Those leaves are gonna be across from each other up that stem um, or that leaf rachis or that leaf petiole there. So we have a pinnately compound leaf. Ashes, um, hickories, and our um, walnuts have pinnately compound leaves. Now let's come over to this and figure out what we got going on here. If we look at the base of each one of these, look like little leaflets, we're not finding a bud. So we move down here thinking, okay, maybe it's pinnately compound, but there aren't any buds at the base of these, what we think are the leaves. Instead, our bud is all the way down here. So what we have is a bipinnately or doubly pinnately compound leaf. So we've got, this is a one giant leaf made up of lots and lots of leaflets. And examples of this would be honey locust and our Kentucky coffee tree, which is our state heritage tree and the Kentucky coffee tree. So leaf form and leaf form is probably the hardest thing to, to get down. And it's, it's much easier once you have buds out in the spring, it can be difficult, but it's just something with a little practice, you'll get used to, to being able to determine leaf form by looking for where that bud is. Okay, let's look at a few actual physical examples. This is a simple leaf. We've got our buds right there. So there's our bud. We have a stem and we've got one blade. So that's a simple leaf. Okay, we look at this fellow here and we, we're not finding any buds there. Instead, we're finding, you can actually see these very clearly. We find our buds right there. So we know that this whole um, all of these leaflets together make one leaf. And this is a black walnut, which has a compound um, leaf. And it, since it has a compound leaf, they tend to have larger buds because there's a lot of material in there for that leaf for next year. Okay, so we've looked at, is it needle-like or is it broadleaf? We've looked at our leaf arrangement, alternate or opposite or world, and we've looked at our leaf form. Is it, is it a simple leaf or a compound leaf? Now let's talk a little bit about margins. And these are the edges of the leaf. What does that look like? That's a really good characteristic to look at too. So one of the types of margins we have are entire, we call it entire or unlobed. So it's nice and smooth. There's not any teeth and there's not any lobes or indentations on it. And these are two great examples. We've got um, our umbrella magnolia here and you can see that's a very large leaf. And then we've got this little one right here that's not quite as large, but there are no indentations and no teeth along that edges. Then we have lobed leaves and lobes are the parts that stick out and the indentations, we call those notches or sinuses. It kind of looks like thumbs have pushed in on that leaf to kind of squish it in there. And lobes can vary what they look like on 
on different types of trees. They can be kind of shallow like this one or very deep. Um, the sinus is very deep on this with your lobe sticking out. Um, these Both of these species here are oaks. And remember I talked about how our red oaks have bristle tips and you can kind of see it um, depending on if, what your screen looks like. But this one at the top does have bristle tips. It has those pointed lobes. So it's a type of red oak. And down here, this one has a rounded lobe. There's no bristle tips on the ends of that. So it's a type of white oak. Then we have serrated leaf margins. So do and serrated, think of it like a serrated knife. A butter knife even has serrations or a steak knife. So it can be very uniform serrations like we see on this tree right here where the, the leaf vein lines up with the tip of that serration or that tooth, or they can be a little softer or rounder that we see on this one right here. And then you can also have leaves that are lobed and serrated. Um, our red maple is an example of a lobed and serrated. So it has three lobes, one, two, three, and it's got those V-shaped indentations, but the edges of those leaves have serrations on them. They have little teeth all along the edges there. So those are some basics characteristics of leaf margins. And we're going to actually walk through our dichotomous key so you can practice using a few of these. But before we do that, it's always good to do a little practice test. Let's test, see what we learned, see what we remembered from going over some of those characteristics. The first one is, is this a conifer or a broad leaf? Hopefully everybody says that this is a conifer. We see our needles here. And if we were to actually count those needles in those little wooden cups there, in those bundles, we see we have one, two, three, four, five. And if you all remember, that's a white pine. So this would be a conifer. All right, let's look at this one, our leaf arrangement. Do we have alternately or oppositely arranged leaves here? You can see our buds right across from each other and we can see our leaves are too, so we have oppositely arranged. All right, how about this one? So we do we have alternate or opposite leaf arrangement? We've got leaves and buds to look at. Hopefully everybody could see that these are alternately arranged. We can see our buds here, and then we can see how they kind of zigzag along that branch. Ooh, now we get to leaf form. Like I said, leaf form is probably the toughest, but if we look at our leaf here, and we're looking at the base, not really seeing any buds from what we can tell in this picture, but look here, you can actually see that bud. It's a lovely sulfur yellow bud, and this is a compound leaf, so it's got a pretty big bud. This is our bitter nut hickory, but this would be a compound leaf. All right, hopefully everybody's doing well on this. Now let's talk about leaf margins. So when we look at these le this leaf right here, do we have lobed leaves or entire? Is that a, like an oval or do we actually see lobes sticking out like we've stuck our thumbs in there? Hopefully everybody's saying that we see a lobed leaf here. Good deal. All right. Always got to have one of these. Is this statement true or false? This leaf is lobed, serrated, and compound. Well, let's look at our leaf. Do we see any lobes? Mm -hmm. What does the edge of that look like? Does it look like it has serrations or does it look smooth? And let's see, is, what is our leaf form like? Do we see, we see a bud here, a stem, and we see one blade. So it's not a compound leaf, so we know this statement is false. In fact, the leaf is not lobed, it's not serrated, and we know it's not compound. It is a simple leaf. All right, good job. Hopefully everybody did well on that. And we're going to, I'm going to show you a really, really abbreviated example of a dichotomous key before we jump into our tree finder. So this is basically how our little booklet would work or any other type of dichotomous key. Like I said, we use these for insects as well and other organisms, not just leaves. But what you'll, you'll open up your book or your page or whatever you got, and there'll be a one or an A or something like that to start you off. And the first thing when we're doing tree leaves is it's going to ask us, does this tree have needles or does this tree have leaves? And we're looking at this sample right here. Hopefully everybody can see that this tree has leaves. So now it's sending us down to another set of characteristics. So it tells us to go down to B. We've got two more um, options here. And that dichotomous, that di stands for two. There's two questions or two observations that you're looking at to uh, make your selection. 
But now it's asking us about leaf arrangement. And, and this is the order they'll go in all the time. So are our leaves oppositely arranged or are they alternately arranged? And I've circled these so we can kind of see that. So we've got a leaf here, stagger a leaf here, stagger a leaf there. So we've got alternately arranged leaves. So now we go down to C and it asks, are these leaves simple or are the leaves compound? So you all can't really see the buds on these because they're pretty small, but there is a bud at the base here. We've got our stem and then we've got one blade. So that tells us we have a simple leaf. So we're gonna go down to F and look, we have an answer. This is a service berry. And it's just one of our lovely understory trees that we have out in the forest of Kentucky. So again, a very abbreviated form, but now we're going to jump into using our actual dichotomous tree finder key to try to identify this sample that we have right here. So when you open up your little booklet, um, it starts on page five and see it even tells you start here because these don't have numbers, but you'll notice all of these brackets. There are two statements or two questions it's asking you. So you hit start here. The first one is, does it have needles or does this tree have leaves? Hopefully everybody is going to say this tree has leaves. We have a nice broad leaf. So remember what that little logo looks like right there. It kind of looks like a stylized or lollipop tree. Remember what that looks like and flip over to page 14 in your guide and you'll look for that same little logo and that logo is that stylized tree and it's the very top bracket on page 14. So now it's asking us about our leaf arrangement. It wants to know if the leaves um, or buds grow opposite like this. See, it even gives you a picture. It's great. Or if the leaves or buds grow alternately staggered along the stem like this. Well, I've already circled this for us. So hopefully everybody sees that our leaves and our buds are opposite from one another. So we look at our opposite little logo and we're going to take it down to this next bracket. Now it's asking us about leaf form. So if you don't remember what leaf form was, it even spells it out for you. You can tell leaves from leaflets because there is no bud at the base of a leaflet. Okay, so let's look close. I've got a little closer up picture. Um, so we're trying to determine if this is a simple or a compound leaf. Well, we found our bud right here. Here's our leaf stem and we see one blade. So that tells us that we have a simple leaf. So we look for our little logo of simple leaves and we remember what that looks like and we flip over to page 18. And on page 18, we've got that little logo at the top of our simple leaves. And now it's asking us a little bit about what the veins, and we didn't talk much about the veins, but they give you pictures to kind of help you, um, to help you understand what it's asking. So it asks if each leaf has a single main vein with smaller side veins and it's without teeth or lobes. So here it gives you a little drawing of what it means to have these, that single main, it has the main vein with smaller veins running off of it. And it shouldn't have teeth or lobes. It should be a smooth edge and there shouldn't be any lobes. Or if our leaf has three to seven main veins radiating from one point and the leaf is lobed. Well, our leaf actually looks like that little logo that says maple, but let's count our main our veins. We've got, they all originate from down here at the base of the leaf and we've got one, two, three main veins radiating from the bottom of this. So we know that we have a type of maple. So we're gonna go down to our little maple logo here now it's asking us about those notches or what we talked about as the, the sinuses between the lobes. Remember the lobes are the part that stick out. So it asks if that notch between the lobes are V-shaped. I and mean, by V, they mean strongly V-shaped. And when we look at the notches between here, that looks more U-ish to me. This definitely looks like a U. This looks like a U. This one, not quite so much, but when we look overall, most of our notches or sinuses between those lobes are U-shaped. So we're gonna go over to page 20 where you see that little, it's got that little arrow po poking into that notch. And remember what our symbol looks like there, our little logo, and it's the bottom bracket this time. So now it's asking a little, oh, we're gonna get an answer on this one. Look, there, there's we've got three options here to figure out what type of maple we have. So the first question is, does the, if the leaf stem shows a milky juice when broken, 
and the leaf is usually wider than long and the base of the leaf is not curving, Does the, which is this sample right here. Okay, well, let's look at our photograph here. Well, I can tell you this one doesn't, you all can't tell that, but it doesn't have milky sap when you break it. And when you look at the base of our leaf, it's curved. It's not flat across like this sample. In fact, it looks like this example here. And when we measure it, we see that our leaf is about the same in width as it is in height. So if we looked at our next option, if there is no milky juice and the leaf is about as long as it is wide and the base of the leaf is curving, it's a sugar maple. So that's what we have right here is our sugar maple. Wonderful tree. Everybody loves this sugar maple because if you, I'm sure everybody loves maple syrup on our pancakes. Beautiful tree, great fall color, wonderful product that comes from it. And we have, besides the sap, we also use the wood for things like our basketball courts and our bowling alleys. It's also called hard maple as well. All right. Hopefully that felt good. We're going to do another one real quick because um, I don't want to run out of time because we definitely want to hear about Forest Products Week. But um, let's try to identify this one. Now, you've already seen this picture a few times and you may know what it is. We'll go much faster on this one. We'll st start here. We know that this tree has leaves, right? That's a nice broad round leaf. It is not a conifer, doesn't have needles. Remember what our logo looks like? Flip over to page 14, logo at the top. Are our leaves opposite or are our leaves alternate? We've circled them, I've circled them for you here. So they look like they are staggered along that twig. So we have alternately arranged leaves this time. So look for that logo of alternately arranged leaves over on page 21 and it's the middle bracket. So now it asks us about leaf form again. This is always the order it will go in. It asks if the leaves are compound or if the leaves are simple. We're going to look close here. You can barely see that bud because it's not a big leaf, but there is a bud there. There's our leaf stem and we have one blade. So we know we have a simple leaf. And um, so we're going to take our simple leaf logo right there. And you can tell it how it's different from the compound leaf logo and take that over here. Yes, for our simple leaf logo. And we'll take it to our simple leaf logo over here. Now it's asking us about the tip of the leaf. Remember, we didn't, we talked a little bit about leaf tips. So it asks if this leaf is tipped with a single bristle, like the tip of a needle. And you can see there's a great example of what that should look like. Or if the leaf has no bristle tip, it can be pointed, but doesn't have a bristle tip. And our leaf is pointed, but it doesn't have a bristle tip. And if you were actually holding this, you would see that. So we want to look at this non bristle tip tipped leaf. Take that over to the next page. It's the top logo here, that top bracket. Now it asks us if our leaf is heart-shaped with the veins branching from the base. Well, hopefully you all can see that this leaf is pretty heart-shaped. It was the one we used as our example with that chordate or heart-shaped leaf base. It is, and all of our veins radiate from that main part where it's attached to its stem. So we have a redbud, an eastern redbud. Wonderful tree. You all see this all the time um, planted, I'm sure, around your school. You might have one in your yard. We find it out in the woods as well. Beautiful pink flowers. It is in the pea family or the legume family. So it has little pea-shaped flowers and it produces these pea-like type pods. So this is our eastern redbud. Beautiful, beautiful understory tree. All right. That was quick, but if you ever, if you do get a chance, get your hands on one of those tree finder manuals and I'll show you that again. But if you don't have one of those, there's some other ways to go out and do some quick tree identification. One is using the iNaturalist app. It's a free app for your phone. You simply take a picture of the leaf of your tree and it's gonna give you a selection, a series of options to choose from. Does it look like this? Does it look like that? It's not a dichotomous key, but it might help you get to the right one, the right tree. Now here's the Virginia Tech tree ID. This is a really robust and a really lots of options. There's over 400 different species in it. It is an online one. There's also one you can do on your phone as well, but it is pretty robust and there's a lot of species in there. Um, another great little 
website is the Arbor Day Tree Identification. You can do it online, and it's all of these are free. You can do this online at Arbor Day Tree Identification. We also have on our Department of Forestry and Natural Resources website, we've got some tree identification videos. So if you don't remember what is simple um, versus um, compound for leaf forms, um, Doug McLaren walks you through that. Um, if you don't remember about leaf arrangement, alternate versus opposite, he also walks you through that as well. And then we've got um, at our Department of Forestry and Natural Resources website, Common Trees of Kentucky. We've got about 85 different tree species up there. And this will tell you so much more than just the identification. It goes through all of the identification of those trees, but it's also going to tell you where that tree grows, what kind of soil it grows best in, what kind of if it's wind pollinated um, or if it's insect pollinated, what kind of wildlife um, favor that tree, rely upon that tree. And then just some really cool fun facts about what the wood might be used for, what we use that tree for, and um, some of the natural history of that tree as well. And those are nice little short seven minute videos um, and you can pick out whatever tree species you want and learn a little bit more. And then we've also got at our UK Horticulture, um, UK Department, of horticulture, they have a, about 75 fact sheets on native trees of Kentucky as well. And then lastly, just a couple of books. This is the one that we walked through, the Tree Finder Dichotomous Key. And it's, um, Sibley's will also have a dichotomous key in it as well. These two do not have dichotomous keys, but Sibley's is a book and it's, you know, three, 400 pages, much heavier to carry out into the woods. But our tree finder, like I said, it's pocket size and it's got a ruler on the back. When it asks you questions about how long or how big a leaf might be, you can use the ruler on the back of the book. So the tree finders are handy. Now, Trees and Shrubs of Kentucky is a great one. It's going to show you that tree all through the seasons. And these are specific to Kentucky and specific information about them in Kentucky. And then this is a great one, just the natural history of trees, talks about the ethnobotany, how this tree has been used in the past and whatnot. And so just, just some real good tree resources. So check some of those out. All right, I'm going to stop sharing. Hopefully everybody gets the opportunity to get out and check out some of those trees in our fall. I mean, we've still got them out there. Get out there while the leaves are still on the tree and see if you can do a little identification.